Hello. This is a video about handling highlights and shadows in Lightroom 6 and SilkyPix Developer Studio 7 Pro. It will also touch on an issue which is often discussed in the context of highlights and shadows, and that is whether it's worthwhile using RAW with small sensor cameras. Does a RAW image contain sufficient information uh, for it to be useful in extracting more from highlights or shadows? I'm not going to talk particularly about that as we go through, but you may find some of the things you see interesting in that context. Most of the examples we'll look at are from small sensor cameras, Panasonic TZ60 and the Panasonic FZ200. A couple of the examples are from uh, an APS-C camera, a Canon 70D. What I'm going to do first of all is talk about the tools that these two products make available for handling highlights and shadows and then look at a fair number of examples. Uh, we need to look at quite a few because the situation is not straightforward. There are two main ways of dealing with highlights and shadows. One is by means of global operations which affect the whole of an image and the other is through local operations which affect a selected area of the image. For example, I'm going to do a global operation on the image that we're looking at now. This statue is overexposed. There's not much detail showing in it. And what I'm going to do is to work on the image as a whole. I'm simply going to tell, and this is Lightroom in this particular case, I'm going to, tell it to pull the exposure down and to pull the highlights down. And that was done for the whole image. And if we now look at the statue, we can see more detail. It hasn't cured the problem completely. It looks like there are some blown areas at the back in this bush. But that was a global operation. Let's now look at a local operation. In this case, I'm going to affect one half of this picture. So I'm telling Lightroom to deal with the area that's shown in red at the moment. Another approach, and this is an image by Mike Digi at dpreview.com. Thank you, Mike, using your image again. So one way of uh, marking out this local area to use is simply to put a an oval down and again tell Lightroom to bring the shadows down. Okay, you can bring them up as well and down in that area. Another approach available in Lightroom but not in Silky Pix is and you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing here, but I'll arrange it so that you can see the effect. I'm painting on an area so it doesn't have to be an oval or a uh, one of these graduated um, um, filters. So I can, for example, I might paint over here as well and over here. Um, I probably wouldn't actually do it this way. But now I've got these three areas and if I tell Lightroom to pull the highlights down, it does it in all three areas at once. There it is up and there it is down. So we've got global and local operations and you can use them in combination. Let's now look at the specific tools that Lightroom and Silky Pix provide. We'll start with Lightroom. There are, for global operations, three sliders that do most of the work. 
One is exposure, where you can turn the overall exposure of the image up and down, especially if you're using the right. There we go. Turn it up and down. And the other two are called highlights, which if you push it one way, brings the highlights down. You can't see it doing much in this particular image. Perhaps I'll use a different one. Um, so I can make the highlights brighter or darker. And then the shadows, I can make the dark areas brighter or even darker. So notice in Lightroom, you can turn these sliders, all three of them, in both directions. You can have more or less exposure, highlights and shadows. There are two other sliders which are relevant. Don't get used often in highlights and shadows, but it's helpful to know what they are. At the moment, if I move my cursor up here, you can see an arrow and some shading at the top right-hand end of the histogram. And this is the area that Lightroom calls the whites. These are the very brightest areas in the image. So if I use the whites slider, the bulk of the effect is taking place in this area here. Next to it here is a broader area, and this is parts of the image that are bright, but not as bright as the very brightest ones. And this area is what Lightroom calls the highlights. And if I use the highlight slider, most of the action takes place in the areas of the image which are in this brightness range here. Similarly, at the other end, there are the blacks in the very darkest areas, and then the shadows. And most of the work with global operations is done with the shadows and the highlights and the exposure. With local operations, if I put one of these down, we've now got a slightly different set of options available to us. And what's relevant in terms of highlights and shadows here is that we've still got exposure and highlights and shadows. We don't have whites and blacks available to us in an area like this. And what's available in an area is the same whether it's one of these ovals or one of the gradients or uh, one of the selections using the adjustment brush. So those are the tools that Lightroom makes available. Let's look now at Silky Picks. Silky Picks doesn't have highlights and shadows um, sliders, but it has functions that deal with highlights and shadows. Most of the work, and I'm just going to put the um, histogram away for the moment to give us a bit of room. Um, I may have to put that back later so we can see what's going on. Most of the work in Silky Picks is done with two sliders, not three. There's an exposure bias, which is the same as what Lightroom does with this exposure, so that makes things brighter or less bright overall in the image. And then there is this one that at the moment says HDR. And if we drop down the uh, drop down menu, we can see there are six options, all of which have to do with dodging and burning. Burning is what you do or, light, uh, or silky picks is word for what you do when you draw down highlights. So you burn highlights to bring them down. And you dodge shadows to bring them up. And there are two versions of these. Um, there's the dodge and color burn, and there's the dodge HDR and color burn HDR. And we'll see later what the difference is between the two of them. And then you've got this Dodge Color Burn and HDR, and Dodge Color Burn is Dodge and Color Burn at the same time, and HDR is Dodge HDR and Color Burn HDR at the same time. 
And I can only pick one of these six. That means that I don't have the freedom that I have in Lightroom independently to alter what's happening in the highlights and in the shadows. And it makes it more complicated to do some operations because it requires a combination of getting the exposure in a suitable place and then deciding which of these you're going to use. And it isn't always obvious. There is a complication with highlights, but not shadows. There's this tool called the Highlight Controller. And this lets you affect the way that burning works. Now, burning was to do with bringing highlights down, color burn and color burn HDR. This has to do, as far as I can tell, with color burn, not with the HDR version. And if you're bringing down highlights using this color burn, you can alter what it does by moving these sliders around. So with chroma, it will pay more attention to color. With luminance, it will pay more attention to the brightness of what it's dealing with. And if you're dealing with the colour, then you can also use this slider, which will alter what aspect of the colour it deals with, either the amount of saturation in it or the colour of the colour, the hue. And the luminance restoration, I haven't worked out an easy description for yet, but we may see it a little later on. There's also a dynamic range expansion uh, slider here, which I haven't found a need for in any of the examples I've been working on for this video. There's one other place that's relevant, that I know of, in Silky Picks for highlights and shadows, and that's the contrast section. Now what we've got here at the bottom is sliders relating to contrast. And there are two of them that may be relevant. I'm probably going to be using one of them. I might use both. One is Gamma, and Gamma alters the distribution of light in the image. Um, that's with a very low Gamma, and that's with a high Gamma. It, the high Gamma flattens out the look of the image. Black level increases the degree of darkness. <laughs> it darkens things. It's like in Lightroom has a black level slider. This one is like that, only it only goes in one direction. You can only make the darkest areas darker. Using this, you can't make the darkest areas lighter. You have to use one of these things up here, and you have to dodge in order to make dark areas lighter. We saw earlier in Lightroom the uh, ovals and the uh, gradient that I put down. Silky Pix has much the same thing called partial, partial correction tool which is out of the picture at the moment. There it is. And you can put down ovals which you can then bring the um, brightness down in and also these gradients as with Lightroom. However, in Lightroom there was quite a lot of things that we could do when we were operating on one of these local areas. And that included the operations of the highlights and the shadow sliders, each of which could go in either direction, brightening or darkening. There's no equivalent of that in Silky Picks. All we can do is make an area darker or increase its contra increase or decrease its um, saturation or contrast, and we can make it lighter or darker, but we can't bring down the highlights or bring up the shadows in a local area. So those are the tools 
that Silky Picks and Lightroom make available. Now let's look at a dozen or so examples. So if we start with a simple one. And in all these, I'm, if I remember, I'm going to start with Lightroom just to put some shape on it. Now here's an image where it's bright over here. It was a sunny day. I was in the shade. There's light, um, sunlight directly falling on some of this. What I'd be inclined to do with this one is simply, uh, I might well just pull the exposure down, although oh, I've done the same thing again as before. Right, uh, pull the exposure down and uh, that might be all I need to do. Similarly, in Silky Picks, I've got a slider that enables me to bring the overall level of brightness down. So you don't have to get complicated about these things. And here we've got this bird is very dark and the simplest thing is simply we make him oh he's too big now um, to bring the shadows up now there's a question of how much you actually want to do this it is a very dark bird and you probably wouldn't be able to see much of it uh, and if you bring it up too much it looks silly and horrible as well um, but that's fairly straightforward in this case to bring the highlights up in Lightroom simply with the highlights, uh, sorry, the shadows, with the shadows slider. If we look in Silky Picks, now we have to work out how to do this. The way to bring up a shadow is to dodge. So I'll first of all try the plain dodge, and that's bringing it up a bit, and that might be as much as we want to do. If I look at the HDR dodge, it's a much more powerful thing, and it's more easy to go over the top and again make it look silly. But again, in Silky Picks, that's fairly straightforward. Now let's look at the statue again. And what I did here was simply pull down the highlights. No, I didn't. I pulled down the exposure. And then I pulled the highlights down. Incidentally, the reason I pulled the exposure down was that I saw that this histogram looks unbalanced. There's loads of it up the top and an empty space at the bottom. So the first thing I want to do is to shift the whole thing over to the left. And that I can do by moving the exposure. Then, when I've got the overall brightness on average, like I uh, would like to see it, I can then start with highlights and shadows. And incidentally, I just have this feeling that it's probably best, by and large, to use highlights or shadows. If you use both, then the image is probably going to start looking rather flat. So that's Lightroom working on a raw image from a TZ60. Let's now see what happens if we try this same thing working on a JPEG. And this was a raw and JPEG pair. So what I did was to reduce the exposure and bring down the highlights. Well, let's have a close look at what's going on here. It's gone grey. I can't get detail into there. No matter what combination I use of these sliders, and if we compare that with how it was with the RAW, there is definitely detail there in the RAW. And I could increase the contrast and things and try and make it a bit better, but there's definitely detail there. So that is, in this particular case, 
a difference between the way the JPEG and the RAW versions of this image respond. Let's now go over to SilkyPix, or strictly speaking, it's the way they respond in Lightroom. It might be different in SilkyPix. And to be honest, I don't know because I haven't tried this. So I want to, uh, we're looking now at the raw file. So I want to do the equivalent of what I did in Lightroom. And it might be that I bring the overall brightness down and then try and bring the highlights down, which would be a burn operation. So I'll try this color burn. And that's um, oh and I need a close look at this in fact that may have done it yes I think it probably has um, let's see what happens if I try the HDR burn now that's not doing the effect so even though HDR seems to have a very strong effect sometimes, in this case, the other one, I think is having the stronger effect. And I might want to bring the overall brightness down a bit as well. But I've got an alternative approach that I can use here. And I don't know whether this is going to work or not, but um, I'll try it. I find with Silky Pix it, it is a bit more of an experimental uh, approach to, to try various things to see what works. In Lightroom it's fairly straightforward. You've got the highlight slider and the shadows slider and the exposure slider and I find it quite easy to work out what they're going to do. It's not so straightforward in my mind when I'm dealing with silky pics. So I'm going to put this back to how it was in the beginning. So that's how we started. And now instead of bringing the um, bringing the exposure down I'm going to try and just bring the highlights down using this HDR approach. Didn't work before, I'm not sure why I think it should work now. And if I look closely, no, I don't think it has. So this is one where I did achieve it one way and the other way that I tried didn't work. Well, let's just try it with a JPEG a minute in here, just to see if there's any uh, difference between Silky Pix and Lightroom from this point of view. I'm now looking at the JPEG. And what I did, I think, was to turn the exposure down and to use a dodge on it. I'm already starting to get confused between dodge and burn. I have to think about it every time to see what they do. Um, no, it's um, it's not a dodge, it's a burn, isn't it? There we go. Um, ah, yeah, mm, okay, um, I think we can see it's going grey again. It's, but it may be, I don't know. It's, it's certainly not getting the amount of detail that it did um, using raw. It, it might might be getting a bit more than Lightroom. I, I think it probably isn't actually. Next let's try one that I've used before uh, but I'm going to tackle it in a different way and that is this one. This is a raw version I'm looking at at the moment. Now previously I've in another video I showed um, this operating on this um, using one of these graduated filters and then doing that sort of thing. What I'm going to try this time is a different approach where I just try global operations and see how far I can get with it. I know that the shadows are too dark so I'll pull them up. And I've done it again. So what's happening is that I, I operate on a local area and I've got a menu to do with that and then I forget to close that down. Um, so I'm twiddling these sliders and they don't have any effect. 
Now I'm back to the global effects and I know the shadows are dark so I want to bring the shadows up and it's not done too badly actually, especially if I was to perhaps bring the exposure up just slightly. Um, that's not bad. Now I've still got all this in the, um, in the sky that's very bright so let's try bringing the highlights down in the sky. Well, that's not too bad, I think. And so that's a global operation. Now, obviously, I could I could tweak it with local operations, um, but that's that's fairly quick and easy. That was a raw. Here's a JPEG. Let's try the same thing. The shadows need to come up, and the highlights need to go down and to make it a bit brighter overall and if I go back to the raw there's the raw that's the JPEG that's the raw that's the JPEG the colors are slightly different here but I could alter that quite easily uh, with the local operation so in this particular case the JPEG has done pretty much as well as the raw really in fact looking at the colors it might even have done a bit better that was in Lightroom. If we now go over to Silky Picks, here's this same image. So I want to bring up the, and I've got a feeling, let me just make sure that, ah, oh, that's it, okay. Here is this image, and how am I going to alter it? I haven't got a um, I haven't got a shadow slider, so I'll go up here, and I don't really want to make this brighter because that will affect the sky. The sky looks quite good actually, so I might just leave that. So it could be that I can just do a dodge in order to bring up the shadows. Well, that dodge isn't having a terrific amount of effect. So I'll try the Dodge HDR and that is having more of an effect but I don't think it's it's not got that. So I think I would have to either use a local operation or use this and then use a local operation to complete it. Uh, I don't think unless, and this is where I'm saying that it's a bit experimental, Suppose I was to increase the exposure. Now this is a bit counterintuitive because you think, well, the sky is already bright enough. I don't want to make it brighter. But what I'm trying to do now is to make it so that the clouds are too bright, the hedges and so on at the bottom are too dark. And so if I use HDR, this, um, uh, sorry, HDR that does both shadows and highlights at the same time, it's possible that I can get this into the state that I want. Oh, and that works. There we are. Now, it may be apparent from um, the way I'm talking, this isn't a scripted... Um, I'm not going through a script here. I'm, I've, I've had a look at them, obviously, um, but I can't remember what I did from with all these images. Um, and so you are getting a genuine reflection of the what I mean by this experimental approach of having to try things. And there are some which are, are let's say, counterintuitive, like raising the exposure even more before you begin. And then we've got the, um, the JPEG version, but we've already seen that JPEG can, um, in, this, in this case, do quite well. The next one is Mike's church interior but I don't think there's anything more I want to do that we've already seen that we can use local adjustments by putting an oval down or by using the adjustment brush um, and oh I will try it in silky picks though um, in fact, I've done this in another video, but, but I'll, I'll try doing it quickly here as well. Look, in Lightroom, we saw that uh, I could just put an oval down and I can pull the highlights down, and that's fine. Uh, and I can do the same with these windows here, although um, you can run into complications with it not quite 
fitting nicely at the edges, but that, that's not too bad. The alternative is that I can use this um, adjustment brush and if I delete the thing that I've already put down, which is, I've lost it. Huh. Has it gone? Has it disappeared? Oh, there it is. I just didn't see it. Um, yeah, I can, um, I can use this adjustment brush and paint uh, and then change the, uh, pull the highlights down in the area that I painted. If we look at silky picks and look at the same image in silky picks, I can put down one of these ovals. There it is. And if I turn the light down, that's just showing us where it's going to act. The trouble is that I can't now apply highlights to this. I can't pull down the highlights. The only thing I can do is these things here, which is pull the, the brightness of that area down. And if I pull the brightness down, the areas between the bits of glass are going to become dark as well. Uh, and it won't look it won't look as effective as if I was just pulling the highlights down. Unfortunately, all these operations that I've got available over here to do with dodging and burning aren't available within this area. If I use those now, they're still going to operate on the whole image. They are global. You can't use them locally. The only things I've got locally are here, which means that it's rather more limited what I can um, work with in Silky Picks. That doesn't mean I'm always going to get worse results, by the way, as I think we may see later on. The next example is one of my favourite subjects, an invertebrate. And it's very bright here. Now I'm in Lightroom, and so I'm going to bring those highlights down. Fair enough. Thing is, it's it's now got rather dark, um, and I really want the insect to be a bit brighter than that. Um, if I oh yes, pull the highlights down, and I can see texture in this area over here now. Um, but to get this to work, I've had to pull the exposure down a bit. Now this has made. Uh, and I, oh, and and I've got a gap at the top of the histogram here, which means this is not, a, not using all the. Um, uh, now I've got a problem here. I've got the highlights pulled down as far as I can, um, and it's still not dark enough. So I I need to 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 go in that direction, which opens up a gap at the top, which means this isn't as bright as I want it. Um, and so now I need to try and think a bit creatively. Uh, I want that brighter. And can I... Uh, no, that has to be... That has to go down. And, oh, right, OK, I'll pull the shadows up. Ah, oh, there we go. So the insect is now um, a reasonable brightness. It's still missing at the top, which means this whole image is flatter than it needs to be. So if I pull the whites up, that will pull the histogram up to the top. And there we are. I've now I've now filled the histogram at the top. I haven't filled it at the bottom, so I'll pull it across with the blacks. And this is one of the nice things about Lightroom, that I can understand what's going on here. You know, I want to, to, to expand the histogram at the top, and I knew the way to do that. Just pull the whites across, it'll go similarly with the blacks at the bottom. Now, when I tried this earlier, there was an effect that I don't actually see now, but I'll show you the cure for it, even though it's not actually showing the problem at the moment. What happened was that this area and this area went rather dark, and I didn't want them that dark. Now, you could try with this adjustment brush to paint in here uh, and to brighten that up. So if I turn the exposure up, the problem is to get this horrible line uh, you may not be able to see it on the video, but in between the leaf and the outside, and obviously I wouldn't actually turn up the background that much, I'm just illustrating it, but there is this, this horrible line in between, so that's not really very good. 
what you can do though is put one of these um, ovals down and pull up the exposure say um, or in fact I did it by pulling up the uh, the shadows uh, and you can make that area lighter uh, without getting a very nasty boundary between the two. So I thought okay um, I'll do the same here and bear in mind this doesn't actually need doing now we're pretending that this bottom area is darker than it actually is. So I put one of these down and um, brought the shadows up here too which is fine except that this shape here now encompasses part of the insect and I don't want that made brighter because I've got this looking at a nice sort of brightness how I wanted it so what I'm going to do is to use a brush and if I so we can see what's going on now I can now brush out if I hold the right button down I can now brush out the effect of that oval but just in the areas where I don't want it to have an effect. So now I've got the nice smooth transition between the area where I've raised the shadows unnecessarily and the leaf and I've still got my insect unaffected by that operation. I think that's quite powerful. There's no equivalent of that in Silky Picks. We go across to Silky Picks and let's see how we deal with this. Now, I can't remember exactly how I did it, but I think if I just pull this slider across, it's now that's having an HDR effect, it's making the whole thing look very flat. Let me try using this. In fact, what I want to do is to burn the highlights. And that's not having much effect. So I'll try the HDR burn. And that's, that's actually quite good. Um, the background didn't get affected. Again, this was more of an issue last time round. I tried it for some reason. There must be some difference in what I'm doing now. Um, but that's made a pretty good job of it. Um, the insect I'd actually like to be a bit darker, but I can probably just increase the contrast a bit uh, and get the insect looking more as I'd like. Yeah. So in fact, even though Silky Picks doesn't have this very clever business about being able to not only put the ovals down but then paint out an irregular area where it doesn't apply, um, in this particular case it's done quite a good job. The next example is a sunset. Let's see what we can make of this. This is raw and you can see from the histogram that it's underexposed and overexposed. There's a high dynamic range here. What happens if I'd like to see what's going on in those clouds? So I want to make the dark areas brighter. So I'll use shadows. And again, I've done the same thing. I was operating on a local area previously. Now I'm not, so I'll use shadows. And it's raised things up a bit. Um, let me try pulling the highlights down. Hmm. Pull the exposure. Ah, oh, now that's getting more interesting. Uh, and now we're very much into the area of personal taste as to what you like the look of. But again, I've got nice flexibility here. I can understand what's going on. At the moment, I'm playing with the highlights. I can take the overall exposure up and down. And... I can work on the shadows, bringing them up and down. And I think that, that Lightroom's given me um, a good tool to work with here on this image. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I'd want it to be, but I, know, I can see that I, I can play with it and probably get something that I wouldn't 
think was too bad out of that. Now that was a raw. Here's a JPEG of the same scene. So let me see, let me turn the exposure up and I'll bring the highlights down a bit and I'll bring the shadows up a bit and well it's not too bad really. Um, it's certainly very different from what it was. Uh, there we go, that's what it was and that's what it is now. Now there's an argument which says you yeah, know well actually it's probably better more like the dark one than the light one but that's beside the point in this particular case I think. And as between the RAW, that's the RAW, and that's the JPEG. RAW and JPEG. In fact, if we look closely, that's probably a bit too close, but um, the RAW is a bit more subtle in the very highly exposed area. But, you know, you look at the thing overall, and you've got to ask, hmm, how different is that? Let's look at silky pics with the same image. This is the raw version. Now, I am very tempted just to try straight HDR on this because I want the bright areas to be not so bright and the dark areas to be not as dark. I think that's what I want, except that I want the dark areas to get lighter much more than I want the bright areas to get not so bright because I know the sun. I'm not going to be able to do much about that anyway. And this area, the rest of the bright area, actually is perhaps not too bad. I've changed my mind. I think I'll try and leave this like it is, and I'll try and make these two areas brighter. So that means that I need to dodge the dark areas. I'll try an ordinary dodge to begin with, and it's it may have done enough actually. Let me see what happens if I use the HDR dodge. And look, that's hardly doing anything at all. Extraordinary. Um, I really don't understand the way this works. Uh, I'm going to increase the exposure and then try this ordinary dodge again. But now this area is too bright for my liking. What I'd like is the clouds like this but and the sea like this, but this not so bright. So what I'm going to try and do is something that I think I did before, which is I'm going to take the brightness up so that uh, I'm going to have to bring down the bright bits as much as I'm going to bring up the dark bits. And in fact, that might already be about right. Now I'm going to use the HDR, which is both dodging and burning, highlights and shadows, and very little effect. Now I'll try the dodge and burn, which is the non-HDR version of it, and aha, that's not too bad. If I now play with the overall exposure, there I've got the middle bit looking fairly reasonable. Now, it's not too bad, but I don't have the creative possibilities I do with Lightroom because with Lightroom I can independently work on the highlights and the shadows. Here I'm constrained as to the combinations that I can use. I can get around it to a certain extent by changing the exposure. Um, but even so, I've still got to reckon on, if I'm using highlights and shadow, dodge and burn, that I'm going to use the same amount for both of them. And if what I want to do simply doesn't allow me to use the same amount of both, then I can't get the effect that I want. The next example in Lightroom is this beach scene with some overexposed clouds here and a dark area here. So what I'll do is, again this looks, this histogram looks as if it's a bit heavy at the top end, so I'll start by bringing the exposure down a bit. 
and if I bring the highlights down I can get some more texture in the cloud but this bottom is very dark now so I'll try bringing the shadows up and the trouble is that the colors it now it's developing this HDR -y type flat look and the colors it needs more textural color or something in there one of the tricks I often do is um, if I've pulled the shadows up I'll take the blacks down which gives a bit more definition but again this is a somewhat strange look for what was actually a rather bright day uh, I really want a bit more character in that let's see how silky picks deals with this and again I'm completely lost now I can't remember what I did to this before um, let me see that's too bright and that isn't really too dark so I'll just try bringing that down and that means that I want to do a burn and that's an ordinary burn and that's not too bad this bottom bits looking seems to be looking a bit brighter than in, if I go over to Lightroom the, the Lightroom the, the, the stones look um, a bit flat compared to what I've got in Silky Picks I think I prefer Silky Picks's version of that. Uh, let's just see what happens if I um, use the HDR version. Oh, and that's um, dodging, it's, it's burning that I wanted to do. Um, and oh, there we are. That's well, that's not too bad either. Um, so I think I think I prefer the effect that I've got with. Um, with silky pick so despite the fact I've got less flexibility sometimes I get results that I prefer with silky picks let's go back to Lightroom for the moment um, here's a JPEG so let's try bringing the exposure down a bit and then the highlights down now it's falling apart basically the colors are going horrible um, it's not working and I've, I've, I've played with this and, and it, it simply doesn't work. Um, what I haven't tried doing is this same one uh, in JPEG uh, in Silky Picks. Just let's see if that can make any better job of it. Um, so it's bright, so I want to burn and I bring that down. Not really. I'll try the HDR one and try that. Well, yeah, it's not quite such a mess as the as the Lightroom one turned into, but um, it's still not still not brilliant. So there's another example where um, RAW reacted better to a difficult extreme situation than JPEG did. Now some flower examples, and this matters a lot to me. I do a lot of flowers. And this is a problem that I get a lot. I call it bleaching. When I look at this sort of flower in real life, what I see in areas like this is a lighter version of this colour. But the colour's bleached out there in photos. This happens a great deal. The sun falls at a certain angle on petals and they lose their color. It's not blown to complete white. If you look at the histogram, there's not much evidence of, of, of anything you know, being blown completely, but that's not as I want it to look. In Lightroom, well, I'll take the same approach as usual. Um, I don't want to shift the histogram down anymore. Um, so what I'll do, if I look at this area while I'm doing it, I'll bring the highlights down and you see that area is remaining different in quite a big way from the rest of it um, and I can't get a, a result that I like um, by doing that. I'm going to go over to Silky Picks and when I tried this before I got a different effect. If we look here oh, I can if I go moving closer 
Um, I'm going to look now at this highlight controller and I'm going to set it up so that it's dealing with colour. I don't think it makes any difference what I do with this one. And I'm going to do, now it's a bright thing, so I'm going to burn. Now you might think the way to do it is with this HDR, but that has virtually no effect. But if I look at the other burn, it recovers that colour to a significant extent. Now that, to me, and it's done the same here in fact, I think, if I turn that down again, yeah. Now that, to me, makes silky picks worth using. Just that one thing. I do a lot of flowers, and and this may not be the best that I can make it, by the way, um, but it shows it shows the the sort of approach. I mean, there are other sliders to play with that may or may not do things, um, and this fits into my idea of maybe I'm going to hand these um, these files. I'll, I'll put the raw file through something, probably DXO and then hand them out to other applications depending on what it is I want to do. And if it's a flower, I think it's probably going to be Silky Picks that gets the job. I really like that facility. Another example now in Lightroom. Now, there are plenty of people who would say, and in fact I do this myself, who would say that would be better simply if you turned the exposure up uh, and possibly even turned the shadows down so that you've got a nice dark background. Incidentally, see how easy it was for me to achieve that effect. And I wanted the, the background, the dark bits to be darker, so I just pulled the shadows over to the left. Easy. We've had discussions about this on one of the boards uh, on a, on a different... Um, at um, um, talkphotography.co.uk I like I sometimes like very dark backgrounds like this uh, but I actually like stuff going on in the background and my preference would be to push it in the opposite direction so that there is actually something going on in the background and again Lightroom makes it pretty easy to achieve that I've just put the shadow sh slider in the opposite direction it's not necessarily as quite as much as I'd like in the back. Excuse me, in the background, but um, that's that's certainly another alternative, and I can go from that to that very easily. If I now look in Silky Picks, I put the highlight thing away and go to the next picture. Here it is, and make it smaller. So the first thing was I want to make that a bit brighter and I want to bring the background up. Now by now I'm thoroughly confused, I don't know. It's going to be a, a background, it's going to be a dodge operation and I have no idea which of the two it is that I'm going to have to use. Well that hasn't had much of an effect. Let's try the other one which is the HDR version and that's had no effect at all. Am I doing something wrong here? Um, color burn. Oh, that's for highlights. I meant to be dodging. Ha, right. I was doing something wrong. That's more like it. Okay. Now, and that's brought the high, the background up more. Um, I'm not quite sure I like the effect, but at least it shows it's possible to do it. One of the things, though, of course, that you do get, if you bring shadows up a long way, you will get noise. And I've got a feeling we may have not only luminance noise here, but we may have chroma noise as well. No, it's just ugliest sin. Um, so that's actually taken it a bit too far. But in this case, Silky Picks gives me more flexibility than Lightroom does. One of the things with Lightroom that I've found is that it does tend to hold your hand in the sense that its sliders will only take you so far and it will only let you do what you might call sensible changes and sometimes I want to make changes which are not sensible at all um, 
and Lightroom won't let me. I've got more chance of, of messing about like that, sometimes at least, with um, silky pics than with Lightroom. And finally, at last, another flower example to finish with. And this one is more of a, can I do something creative with this? I want to make it brighter and I want to make that flower stand out if I can, but it's against a very bright and dappled background. Can I do this? How would I go about it? Let me see. I'll turn now in this case, I'm going to turn the highlights up, not down. And that's made the flower actually, despite the fact that it's so bright there, I think that's made the flower stand out a bit more. And I might actually take the shadows down a bit. The problem is that if I take the shadows down too much, I'm going to get a very big contrast here in amongst the background, which I personally find distracting. It's that whoops, black bit there that I'm finding troublesome. But um, I've changed it a bit. It was rather flat looking here and I've made it seem a bit more alive to my eye there. I don't know on the video, it may look hardly different. Um, and I could possibly push it a bit further as well. If I go into Silky Picks, and look at that image. Again, I have no idea how I'm going to tackle this now. Um, I'll try and make it brighter, but that's still rather flat, being bright like that. So let me see if I, I can't make the bright bits. Ah, yes, I think if I turn it up now, I can use this black level and make the background darker, the dark bits darker. So yeah, that's put a bit more life into the flower. Um, this black bit doesn't look too bad now. Um, and if I can possibly compare that with how it was before, oh, I'm not sure I can. Um, I'll just try this. I may mess this up. Yeah, that's what it was like before. Um, so it is, again, as with Lightroom, it's, um, it's a bit more lively than it was previously. So, there we are. We've seen the tools that are available in Lightroom and in Silky Picks. And we've seen that the tools are more complicated in Silky Picks. Lightroom's easier to handle, for me at least. It's more intuitive. But sometimes Silky Picks gives results that I like better, particularly with those flowers, but that's not the only case. I can't yet see any clear pattern as between the two of them as to which produces better results. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other. And there's something similar with JPEG and RAW as well. Sometimes there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference between them in, in, in circumstances in which you might assume that there would be. On the other hand, in some rather similar looking circumstances perhaps, the differences are, to my eye, significant. In fact, in the case of that statue, the differences were considerable, I think. So, we've looked at highlights and shadows in Lightroom and in Silky Pix Pro, and we've had a little think about JPEG and RAW. So, that's it for now. Goodbye.